Welcome to part two of my 1950s science fiction hidden gem movies. Yes, I will do horror movies in the future, I promise. Message movies had a bad reputation in Hollywood. Films that challenged received wisdom and the status quo never made as much money as the ones that entertained the masses without rocking the boats of their biases. The World, the Flesh and the Devil was a financial failure, but taking the long view, it's an artistic success. Harry Belafonte plays Ralph, a man who was trapped in a coal mine collapse just as the world is depopulated by clouds of radioactive sodium isotopes that have short half-lives. It was mutually assured destruction without the damage to the real estate. Ralph frees himself from the mine and travels from Pennsylvania to New York City, where he sets himself up. There he meets a young white woman, Sarah, played by Inga Stevens. I've been watching you for weeks now. Some of the things you do, I wasn't sure. You I didn't have know. been acting crazy? Well, why not? This is a crazy world. And I thought I was all alone in it. They become friends, but Ralph's social caution around white women prevents the relationship from moving forward. After a while, the two find a sick man on a boat that drifts into New York Harbour, a guy called Ben, played by Mel Ferrer. They nurse him back to health, and the tensions of the old world start to manifest in the new. It's a cliche to call certain movies brave, but in late 1950s America, it took guts to address the two biggest social fears in one movie nuclear annihilation, and racism. This film is impressive thematically and visually, with the three characters roaming the vast canyons of an empty city, foreshadowing films like Vanilla Sky and The Quiet Earth. We also get a resolution to the conflicts of the characters, which is immensely satisfying as it skewers certain ideologies that still plague our world. Racy French comedies aren't the first kind of movie you think of when you imagine 1950s science fiction, but I like this one. It's charming and it's light fun. It stars one of the best-looking roosters in cinema history, Jean Marais, as Professor Jerome. He's a scientist experimenting with suspended animation, and who wasn't in the 1950s? Jerome is testing his suspended animation fluid on ants, and he can't understand why the little buggers keep disappearing. He has a fiancée, Monette, played by Agnès Laurent, who, as the story continues, is quite a nasty person. Jerome isn't in love with her. She wants to marry him so she can get him to work for a soft drink company that's offering a lot of money. But the professor also has a new student assistant, Edith, played by Jean-Vierre Page, with whom he starts a romantic relationship. By accident, they discover what happens to the ants in the professor's experiments. They shrink and become inanimate figures. His suspended animation potion works. The experiments continue on small animals and even an elephant until disaster strikes. One day, Jerome's fiancée almost catches him with Edith, who impulsively drinks the suspended animation potion. This movie is based on the short story The Diminishing Draft by Valdemar Camfort, which appeared in Famous Fantastic Mysteries in December 1939. It's a silly, transgressive comedy farce, but I like it a lot. Murray is fast becoming one of my favourite French actors of the middle decades of the 20th century. And he was a deft-handed comedy. He wasn't scared to make fun of himself. He's perfect as Jerome, and Jean-Vier Page is charming as the audacious and resourceful Edith. This movie goes under the English titles of Girl in His Pocket and Nude in His Pocket if you're searching for it. And if you like this kind of light fast, you might want to do that. After I talked about The Rocket Man in part one of this look at 1950s science fiction movies, it seemed fair to throw in another John Agar joint. In this one he plays one of a team of archaeologists, who, which includes Hugh Beaumont and Nesta Piver, who travel to Mesopotamia, not specifying whether it's Iraq, Iran, Syria or some other part of that region, and there they find a 5,000 year old underground Sumerian civilization ruled over by Alan Napier 
and a whole bunch of other pale males who are, in essence, the Calvin Candies to an enslaved race of mole people. Of course, there's one cute woman in the civilization, a dud played by Cynthia Patrick, and of course, John Agar's character falls in love with her. Now, I'm a sucker for underground civilizations and even hollow earths like the one in a recent movie I might have reviewed a few weeks back. The mole people are ambitious for its budget. The mole people themselves are well enacted with their bulbous heads and clawed hands. They believably tunnel under the ground and they evoke sympathy in spite of the physical limitations of the costumes. The only qualm I have with this movie is that the ending sucks. It's arbitrary and it lands like a brick on a cow pat. Apparently someone in the studio had the racist notion that a romance between a Sumerian underground woman and a red-blooded American archaeologist was an intolerably interracial relationship. And so the ending became what it is. It hasn't aged well. This one isn't so much an alien invasion movie as dealing with an alien toxic waste spill from a space rock that crashes into the California desert. Grant Williams from The Incredible Shrinking Man is a geologist who investigates the space rocks because his bestie gets turned into a statue by touching one of them. The rocks aren't quite rocks, they're more like nanotechnology. If there's water around as a catalyst, the rocks absorb silicon from anything they touch and form crystals with it. And apparently there's some silicon in human connective tissue and skin. After a rainstorm, the rocks produce giant towering crystals which crash, smash and repeat the cycle. As the giant crystals head down a valley toward the town, our intrepid hero, the townspeople, and his marginalised girlfriend played in a role that wastes her talent by Lola Albright. Have to find a way to stop this freaky chemical process before it destroys the world. This universal B picture is a textbook 1950s science fiction movie. But the strangeness of the invasion makes it interesting. It doesn't have brains in a bottle or spaceships or ray guns, just a rock that acts like a giant black snake firework. Grant Williams is as stiff as the people killed by the monoliths, but the effective special effects make this one something out of the ordinary. This movie has the heartbeat of a 1940s universal horror film under the skin of a science fiction movie made on the brink of the 1960s. But it does have a cool, brassy jazz score by Ralph Carmichael, which gets overused to no additional purpose in a few scenes. It's like they saw the man with the golden arm and decided they wanted a whole science fiction movie that sounded like that. Robert Lansing in his first movie role stars as Scott Nelson, a scientist who invents a way to walk through walls. His brother Tony, played by James Congdon, is engaged to Scott's ex-girlfriend, played by Lee Merriweather. Because where two brothers existed in a 1950 science fiction movie, there has to be a love triangle. Scott the uses his new ability to walk through walls to rob, kill and pick up women, though that doesn't go very well because, like capitalism, he sucks vitality from the people he touches. The movie's in colour, but the special effects aren't perfect. They have clearly visible matte lines around them, but they are interesting because of their dodginess. The makeup effects are passably good for the time, and in general, this is a nice little B programmer, which does a couple of things differently than normal science fiction movies of the time. And those little tweaks make it quite memorable. So 4D Man is worth checking out. And if you've seen it before, it might be time to go down memory lane and renew your acquaintance with this strange little 1950s science fiction movie. So there it is, the last part of the 1950s science fiction hidden gems videos. Thank you very much for watching. As always, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button and hitting the notification bell. I'll be back next week with more movies. In the meantime, look after yourselves. Watch some good movies, watch some bad movies, watch some old school science fiction movies, and I'll catch you next time.